Okay, let me introduce myself first. I am Lee Wonshang from Utah. I'm also the KLSF Secretariat. Welcome to today's webinar, KLSF STEM webinar, Old Helmet. Okay, just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any question during the presentation, please type them into the question box. I will bring them up during the time for Q&A at the end. So if you are watching this uh, by Facebook Live, you also can leave your uh, question at the comment there. We will bring to the speaker after the presentation. Okay, so uh, please help us to like and share this video. And now I would like to introduce our speaker today. There are three speakers today. They are the gold winner of KLESF International Challenge 2020 with their innovation project. They are from Chongling Private High School, Pulau Pinang. And then they are very active in designing the projects and achieve many good results from the competition. So they are Ivan Lim Zilun, Kang Yi Te, Ong Zi Zheng. Okay, feel free to ask them any question about their innovation pathway and how they pursue their patients or and even how, how they cope with their studies, you can ask them too. Okay, so now without further ado, we will turn the time over to Ivan, Yi Te and Zi Zheng. Okay, now pass over to you. Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having uh, giving us this opportunity to present our project. And thank you for uh, our attendees for attending our webinar on this very early morning. And we're very glad that everyone here is willing to join us and hear our story for today. And so um, this will be our agenda for today. And we'll be also be having a Q&A session as uh, the secretary has said. And so do be sure to leave as many questions in the chat as you'd love to hear them and answer them. <laughs> So without further ado, let's get started in our presentation. Okay, so first off, you all may have learned that uh, from our partner slide that our project's name is Ohamun, but I'm sure not everyone knows what it's about. So let's um, take a step back and let's rewind ourselves, take ourselves back to three years ago, 2018. So in 2018, I'm sure everyone has heard about the Thai Kif incident in 2018. It was a very scary incident and one that garnered international attention, having been reported on various news sites and news media, such as the BBC and the like. It had so many attention because the story went like this. A group of boys, 13 boys, decided to venture into a cave after their football practice as they liked exploring every nook and cranny of their island and their place. But as the time went on, as they delved deeper into the cave, they did not realize that the cave was quickly flooding up. By the time they realized, they were barely about to meet their demise and they were stuck there. It was too late. The case started flooding up and the time was beginning to become a luxury. They tried to stay calm and huddle together for warmth and comfort, but, and they slowly waited for help. Yeah, but that's the problem. They didn't know what help was going to come. However, outside, a rescue operation was quickly unfolding and things were about to take a quick turn. Okay, so this diagram illustrates the situations that the rescuers had to deal with. So the authorities called in the elite Thai Navy SEALs and the police national for aid, I mean national police for aid. And some locals even took a part in the rescue mission as volunteers. Very luckily, the 13 trapped boys were rescued in the end. But unfortunately, one of the rescuers, Sang Gunan, died by drowning. He was one of the local former Navy SEAL divers who had rushed in to help in the rescue and was one of the first volunteers. But sadly, however, he lost consciousness while delivering air tanks to the boys, running out of air for himself. So as you can see, there are flooded areas in this cave. And by uh, our volunteers' sad demise, it shows that every second counts in like rescue missions because uh, it's very important. However, there are obstructions inside the caves. Okay, so this was how the rescuers swam the boys in the flooded caves. So you can observe that there is a dive line that guided the rescuers inside the dark and wet caves. Although this diagram is very bright and blue and white, but inside the cave, it's very dark and there's no natural light from the outside. So they had to rely on this dive line to go from A to B. They had to also carry with them the boys from one end to another. And they also had to uh, bring along with them the compressed air bottles for air and oxygen. 
Also, when they had to resurface and come out of the uh, water, they needed to pass through a tight and very narrow opening that was only about 40 centimeters. Like imagine a hole that's less than half a meter. You can only imagine the challenges and hardships posed against them by the odds in this situation inside the dark caves. And that brings us to our next point. There are too many obstructions inside the caves and in any one direction, there are walls, or in this case, bodies of water that block off direct paths of communication. So as you can see in this diagram, there are few to none direct lines of contact between the people. Like there is one here, but as you scale up, there's only going to be few or none. So that is our problem statement. Obstructions in caves lead to a big breakdown of communication. And so nobody really knows the situations inside caves in rescues as there's no signal available to the outside world. Had our rescuers on each side of the water known that a crewmate was in need of oxygen and was drowning, things would have ended on a better note. So our solution is to create this, the old helmet the repeaters. So now I'll talk about the system again, like how all the things is working. So firstly, the helmet will every second send data through a series of repeater, then send it to the back to the master control. That is the operator on the ground. Same to it to the master control. He can also send message through a series of repeater, then will receive by the helmet. Then the user can see the message with using the smart glasses. And if the helmet user want to use to send message back to the master control, they can using the button beside the helmet, then send it back to the ground. Uh, so this is the system diagram of the helmet. The Arduino Pro Mini microcontroller first collects the data from several sensors such as RTC module, temperature and humidity sensor, gas sensor, and control switches for the message selection. After that, the Arduino Pro Mini will process the data and send it to the Node MCU. The Node MCU then will display the information to the OLED display and tri trigger the indi indicators. The Node MCU will also transmit the data to the mesh network. So the concept of our project comes from the telecommunication towers, as you can see on the left. Whenever a cell phone is used, it emits an electromagnetic radio wave called a radio frequency that's received by the nearest cell, uh, cell tower's antenna. Once the cell, cell tower receives the signal, it will transmit the signal to another tower until the signal reaches the switching center. This kind of technology is called a mesh network. So we adapted the concept from the previous slide and we use it as a model of our system. So when a rescue mission starts, the rescuer will place the repeaters on various location in the cave. Then a mesh network will automatically be formed. The old helmet will transmit two main types of data. One, the data collected from the sensors, and two, the message that the rescuers wanted to send. The signal will then be sent through the shortest route automatically, as time is very crucial in rescue mission. Every second count for victims. So now let's see the cave then. For the normal cave, it will look like this. But by adding our old helmet and repeater, it will look like this. As you can see, the repeater will form a big network for them to communicate. And even under the water, the repeater will also working well because it's waterproof. So for the normal range for the connectivity, it's around 100 meter without blocking. And with blocking, it's around like 60 meter like that. So it's a quite a big range for it already. So now let's see the demo video.
So after seeing the demo video, now let's talk some future improvement of our project. Uh, firstly, we would like to add the hard disk sensor and the helmet so we can like 24 hour monitor the life of the rescuer. And next, we also like to add and cave pressure on it so we can monitor the cave pressure inside. And we also like to add the geolocation on the helmet so that we can know where the rescuer is it and it's more easy to monitor them. And we also like to minimize the repeater size to maybe like something like a keychain is very small so we can maybe stick it on the wall and it's very easy to see it. And we also like to maybe to control the facilities like inside the cave. Maybe we can control some lights or some machine inside. And we also like to add the infrared thermometer so that we can know that in front of it, the temperature is it suitable or not. If it is too cold or too hot. Yeah, we, I'd like to also add that this system, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be used in caves, you know, like it's, if you're stuck in the jungle, in the rainforest, like there are a lot of trees that are blocking your way. So you can add the repeaters inside there. Like another uh, implementation that I can think about is in a desert, you know, when you have a huge range of area, but you can't communicate and build cell towers. So you can use our system over there. And that was pretty much of our presentation about our project. We cut some part out as we only choose to talk about more crucial aspects of it. Now moving on, I will be introducing ourselves. So my name is Ivan and I'm 17. I come from Chongling River High School and I hold the position of competition vice president in my club is Creative Electronics Club. So in my free time, I would like to do some design project and love to use some maybe designing software like Fusion 360. Okay. So this is a list of my achievement from the past few years. But the one I'm most proud of it is a recent one, the Kiao ESF International Challenge. And in that competition, I get a gold prize in it. My name is Kang Yito, and I'm 17 this year. I come from Tony Private High School, as them and I hold the position of president in my club. During my free time, I like to do some programming. And these are my achievements in the past. And the one I'm most proud of is the 2019 IET Faraday Challenge in Malaysia, which we got the first run up. And this is the picture of, of that competition. So I'm Zhizheng, I'm 16 this year, and I come from the same place as them, the Chongyi Private High School and Creative Electronics Club. But I hold the position of Academic Vice President, so I plan activities for the club. And in my free time, I like to do creative coding, which, make, uh, which means to make useless projects for fun. So these are my achievements from the past few years. And the one that I'm most proud of is the 2020 USM Maker Fair Challenge. And in that challenge, we got the Gold Award and also the Best Prototype Award. So you can see this is us from that competition using the same project. So uh, that was a good time. So now I will talk about some old helmets achievement. So the first one is the ACC IM STA competition that is in KL. And in that competition, we get married in it. And after that, we move on to another competition that called MSC Apita Malaysia. And that in that competition, we also get married in it. But after that, we make a lot of improvement in it and make a lot of changes. So we move it into the international arbiter and we get a winner in it. Then so after that, in the 2020, uh, it's the USM Make to Fair. And in that competition, we get a gold prize in it. So and the last one is the most recent one, is the KLESF International Challenge. And in this competition, we also get gold prize. So in this picture is we are preparing outside uh, at the judges room uh, well in this picture is in the international apita award and the right side this is the acc imsti competition and we are explaining our project to other participants to let us let them know more about our projects so now i'll show you some picture about uh some picture about mm -hmm. from 2019 uh, international apita in Halong Bay, Vietnam. Uh, so this picture is us receiving the prize on stage. And this picture is other Malaysia teams and we're taking picture and having a good time there. 
this piece, you can see everyone is very happy and receiving their prize. It's very enjoying at that. So next, this is the ACCIM 2019 in KL. So in this picture, you can see it, this is all the finalists and the participants will get into the final and everyone get a prize. And this picture is us uh, receiving our prize from the organizer community. So now let's talk about some problems we face in making these projects. So first, the challenges, the smart dust. As you know, these smart glass will make a feel that is like very high technology or something like photographics. But as the pic I shown is the first design we tested and it's searched from online, but unexpectedly it's not working. So we try to figure out a way around like one week and we came up with a solution that successfully shown the display on the smart glass by reflecting light through a mirror then to a thin transparent film. So finally, we get our smart glass working. So our solution that is we need to design the OLED display, as you can see up here, we'll show the graphic that need to display and reflect it to the mirror at the opposite, then to the glass panel up here, we'll reflect it to another way to the eye side so that we can clearly see through it nicely this smart glass and this smart glass is all connected to the helmet. Okay, so another thing that I like to talk about is water and its uh, implications on our project. So as we all know, this polar molecule, um, it, few of us know that it absorbs 2.4 to 2.5 or 2.5 gigahertz of frequency because of its re resonance frequency. And so what that means for our project is that uh, it will block out any Wi-Fi signals because Wi-Fi signals is also in that frequency range. So Wi-Fi cannot directly transmit through this water, but our project runs on Wi-Fi. So how do you overcome that? Okay, so uh, we remember this dive line diagram that we showed just now. We can integrate, uh, or we also have a wire. As you can see in the ca on my camera, there's a repeater and there is a sticking. Connected. Yeah, there's a connector sticking out, and we can connect wires from one end to another and then integrate it with the dive line inside the cave. So that is uh, one of the ways that we overcame this problem of wi -Fi, uh, water absorbing Wi-Fi. We also have a message selection function in the old helmet, which is designed to facilitate effective communications. These are the preset messages uh, on the screen we provided for the rescuers, but the messages can be changed manually according to the event. If the rescuers uh, want to send something, they can choose what to send by using the three buttons on top. Of the helmet. The buttons are up, down, and select. So when the rescuers want to send a message, he can first choose the category of the message, such as need, found, confirm, in danger, and numbers. After that, he can choose and select the selected short messages. Although this message selection method sounds great on paper, it's quite tough a challenge to code it out. This is where we face the third challenge. We find insufficient programming skills and experiences. I used around three days and I couldn't uh, find a good solution to solve it. But luckily, but luckily, uh, my father is a programmer in his office and he has also a coach in my club. So I asked him for help and we just solved it in just one night. So after going through those challenges above, we have learned a lot and grown a lot too. Because of this project that we made, the teamwork really makes the dreams work. So now I'll talk some team roles of it. So I'm doing the designing and the mechanical stuff in it. And Ito is in charge of the programming and debugging of the project. If the helmet have any problem, he will need to debug it and solve it. And Zhuzhong will be in charge of the hardware, like all the connection, how to connect it. And he will be doing a lot of research also. Like, is it this concept working or not? Is it other competitors in it? We also learned that you win some, you also lose some. Like, these are the two competitions that we didn't win. But it doesn't mean that we can't get anything. In fact, we gain more experiences and record what we are lack of so that we can improve more in the future. 
We couldn't win so many competitions without these losers. As the saying goes, failure is the man mother of success. So another thing that we've learned is that we have to actively search for the answers you want. So as just now we talked about our challenges, right? So um, I think that just really goes to show that um, for every problem, there is always a solution. Just some are harder and some are easier. So um, for, for us to actually successfully solve these problems, we had to go identify the problem and actively search for the answers for that problem. So um, I think this actually applies for not just our project, you know, like in other projects, for example, or when we are learning other things, such as on this top left picture, we, are we went to a machine learning bootcamp to learn like um, introductory machine learning. And we went to a death fest in KL in 2019. And this is Ivan looking up how to do the, I mean, researching about our project at late, ni late at night when we are doing our project. So yeah, we have to actively, actively find the answers that we want that we can solve our problem. Now I'll be talking about um, like more of our motivation, such as where we came from and why we are doing this. So um, oh, as you may have uh, heard our introduction just now, we are from Chongyi Private High School from Penang, Malaysia, and we are all from the Creative Electronics Club. So as you can see from my background here, we're actually in our maker space right now. Yeah, so um, we're still at school, but yeah, and that brings a problem, like we're still at school. How do we really actually do these projects? So it's because actually our school and our club facilitates a great environment for us to do our projects. So the first one, I'll be talking about our school, the Chongyi Private High School. So previously um, in 2019, if I'm not wrong, yeah, 2019, they partnered with Ubitech, which is a robotics provider company that came from China. And uh, we held a robotics competition inside our school. So it was very special because uh, it's the first one I was kind. Like uh, throughout the hundred years of our school's history, yeah, uh, we also had, um, we have never had this robotics competition before. Yeah. So now uh, this picture shows like how devoted they are in making our projects. And you can see that they are learning a lot from this project because most of them have never touched robotics before. And so it was a great new experience for them. So, so we're really glad that the school has provided this opportunity for us to learn robotics. And we got to learn some robotics coding. Like we had to get from point A to point B and bring some blocks around. So yeah, that was really fun. Like that was the first time our school has ever done this. And next, I'll be talking about our CEC's makerspace, like or where we are right now. So CEC Creative Electronics Club, we have a makerspace in our school, a dedicated room. And so this is how it looks like from, uh, from your view, but higher, I guess. So this, this was uh, taken before. So some things may have moved around, but it's more or less the same. You can see that we have a lot of tools and it's very spacious so that we can fit uh, many people and also a few people because um, people make you concentrate. So yeah, we have a lot of facilities inside, such as uh, on the right, we have a laser cutter, laser cutting machine. On the middle, we have a wood sanding machine. And on the left, we have a PCB cutting machine. And in my camera now, you can't see it because it's too far in the back, but this is how it looks like when you get up close. So these three are very important in our projects because on the left, the PCB cutter allows us to make um, printed circuit boards inside our club. So we don't have to manufacture them. Like we don't need to go to PCB way or we don't need to use GLC PCB to make our project, uh, printed circuit boards. Uh, for the more tech savvy of you who know these services. And for the wood sanding machine, um, it's also very useful because sometimes uh, our projects, some of it use wood and we uh, teach some woodworking in our activities as well sometimes. So this wood sanding machine really saves a lot of energy for us. And on the right is the laser cutting machine. And this is this is more of like uh, the, what I think it's in the top two or top three, the most important things in our club because it's, we can make a lot of prototypes with it such as uh, this old hum uh, this smart glass. The, yeah, the lens is made of acrylic, like plastic, and we made it using this laser cutter. Ivan likes to use it a lot because he designs a lot of mechanical designs. So next you can see that there are a lot more tools such as drills um, and woodworking equipment. And this is only like one part of it. There's another part that we didn't show because we scared we are run, run out of time. So that's more or less about our 
make a space equipment. Okay, so after the equipment, we have a project. I mean, this is very special. Uh, we are putting this inside this slide because it's very important and it's very special because it's uh, uh, one of the better projects. Not just better, it's not, uh, more useful, more practical in a sense. Like um, it's installed on our wall and then people can turn on and off the lights and also the door. We have an RFID door where you can uh, take a student ID card and then we can scan it and then you can open the door. So it increases our security too. So this IoT system, uh, we can control the lights, the fans, and we can even do so using um, Google Home. Yeah, Google. So you can be like, okay, Google, turn off all the lights. And then it will turn it all off. But for now, um, because we don't want to turn off the lights right now, so <laughs> we won't demo it. So you can also use your phone to um, control the devices. And I think this just goes to show that um, our CC Maker Space is like an ecosystem in itself. We have a makerspace for students to do their projects and students to do the projects to use for the makerspace. So like this project is uh, made by our ex-president. And I mean, like, it's just a beautiful project, you know? Like uh, there's, um, there's no more systems like this inside our school. Like this is very special. So I think our makerspace is very lucky to have uh, these students. So other than that, I'll be talking about uh, bigger activities of CC at Creative Insurance Club. So the first one is the Penang International Science Fair. And in that science fair, we made uh, mini DIY cars, as you can see in the picture. But the only reason that makes it so much more special is because it was held inside the Spice Arena, which is uh, one of the bigger stadiums inside Penang where we can exhibit a lot of projects. So from the name Penang International Science Fair, international means, uh, international just shows that a lot of people come to exhibit and uh, join the exhibitions, like they go visit. So we were very lucky to have exhibited with these uh, international teammates. So not just teammates, actually, uh, there are other schools as well, like from Chongling High School, because we are from Chongling Private High School, they're from Chongling High School, and there are also like other maker clubs in other schools. And also there are like big companies, such as Maxwell Technology, yeah, and Motorola Solutions, they also, over there and Intel, yeah. A lot of people were, were there. So we were lucky to present and exhibit next to them, like in the same stadium. So yeah, that was a great experience for both us and our members. So um, we, as I said just now, we make DIY mini cars, right? So we make the DIY cars from recycled materials and some maker, like maker tools, like soldering iron, hot glue gun. And yeah, those tools that are very useful. So after they've made their car, Ivan, I mean, there's a racing track for them to compete who's the fastest car. And like, yeah, we can see that a lot of people are having fun, no matter their age, you know, like, uh, no matter how young you are or how old you are, there's always something for you to learn. I mean, for us too, you know, because learning something is one thing, but teaching something is another. So yeah, we are very uh, lucky and grateful to have that, have that chance to present to um, like the science fair visitors. So yeah, we had a lot of experience, uh, we gained a lot of experience uh, throughout that event. And I think our members all agree. So apart from the events, we have uh, like bonding sessions between our, se our seniors and our members. So one of it was the Chinese New Year gathering that we had in 2020. You know, like, I really miss the pre-COVID times where we didn't have to wear a mask in every picture we take. But yeah, this was when before this was this was this was at the beginning of twenty twenty, but like uh, the virus hadn't spread throughout Malaysia so much yet. So yeah, you can see a lot of seniors at the back and a lot of members uh, that took part in the gathering because uh, it was a holiday for that day and not many members um, took part in it because it was a holiday and they had to someone went with their families. So yeah, we. This goes to show that uh, CC not only prioritizes on your activities, your academic achievements, but we also uh, like just have fun once in a while, you know? And aside from that, we have a Christmas party, which is like also pre-COVID times. It was in 2019 where uh, yeah, everyone can roam free without a mask. So on that night, uh, 25th of December, we closed all of the lights inside our maker space. So it was dark all inside here. And then we turn on all the neon lights. So it makes it all aesthetic and fancy. So uh, yeah, a lot of seniors joined that day, actually. So 
so you can see that um they by the looks of their faces they enjoy a lot and then uh the background looks very cool so I, I'm pretty sure everyone uh, like these activities and we plan on making them more in the future because it's COVID now and then it's really annoying. So we really hope that this year we can uh, hold this event again. Another event that we like to hold is camps. So because uh, as a creative electronics club, we only got founded in 2014. So uh, 2014 until 2019, we didn't have any camps. So the first camp was in 2019 where we had a community camp. So this was where our very like high level seniors, they um, organized a camp for all of our communities. So you can see there are relatively few people here. And then uh, we made a lot of fun projects. Like you can, we, <laughs> we first started learning about woodworking uh, at, on this camp where we made like uh, tables and stools. I think it's still somewhere around in our maker space. So like, it was a very special event because it was the first of its kind in our club's history. So other than that, uh, yeah, you can see everyone's having fun here. Other than that, we have a lot of other camps in our school. Because that was the first one, we had a lot, a lot more coming from 2019 to 2020. So this was the CEC camp that we organized for all of our members. So you can see there are more people here and all of them are having fun. And apart from that, other clubs have also uh, organized their camps as well. So like not just us, we have a lot of other uh, clubs inside our school and we call them talent societies. So, uh, okay, so this picture is very, actually a very special and a historical one because uh, inside our school, there are a lot of talent societies and then it, oh, by a lot, I mean a lot, like includes choir club, drama club, 24 festive, uh, 24 festive drums club. And then uh, there's still a lot more, but I can't um, remember it off, off the top of my head. But yeah, there is a lot of clubs inside our school, but we never rarely, I mean, we rarely get to interact with them, you know, like every, we, every, every activity, we just do our activity uh, without um, interacting with them. So this was the first of its kind and it's very special because we actually got to like know more people outside our club and then we actually got to know more about other societies. So we get more inspiration when we uh, organize our activities and it's uh, this, as such. So you can see everyone's having fun here. And actually, it was the first time we got to know each other that well, you know. So like, although we are all on the, all in the same school, although we are all uh, talent societies, but uh, yeah, we never got to really interact until that camp. So it was really special and a really meaningful one. So I just talked about our activities and events. Now I'll be talking about uh, the coaches inside our club and the people who actually have professional insight on these um, fields. So we have three main coaches. One of it is Mr. Uh, Dr. Wong, and the second one is Mr. Kang, and the third one is Mr. Boon. So they all help us a lot in doing our projects. So now I'll pass it to Ethan. So uh, one of the coaches uh, teach us this scamper technique, which is the a team building technique used to develop or improve products or services. Scamper is an acronym for substitute, combine, adapt, modify, or magnify put to other use, eliminate, and rearrange or reverse. So for our project, we use ADAPT to ADAPT mesh network, combine, which we combine my sensors and electronics component to the helmet. Personally, we found this method to be quite effective when it comes to idealing a project from scratch. And so we are glad to share it with uh, of our audience on this morning. If you, uh, if you have never heard of it before, we urge you to try it out on the next time when you get stuck without an idea. So another is, we also have another process of how we make our projects and how we get a new idea. So two of our coaches oversee a company that is Mr. Kang and Mr. Boon. And they do stuff is very systematically and have every procedure we need to, con uh, we need to follow. Experience. And so they come up with this process to create an idea for young inventor competition. So every time we do our projects or we creating our idea, we, we will follow these steps and make a reference of it. Uh, so the first one is we need to have idea generation. Then we need to initialize the concept of development. Then we need to idea self-assessment. And next we need to examine the idea 
and we need to test and prove the concept. Then we need to nail down the idea. And lastly, is we need to also get it know is it this project is it ready for competition or not? Yes. So all these seven steps are very crucial in making a group project from scratch. So yeah, if you like, you can our audiences can screenshot it and uh, use it in their project if they want to. Yeah. So yeah, I, this this really helps us a lot. So that's more or less uh, the end of our webinar presentation. So like, um, there are a lot of things that we didn't cover, but we really hope that you can uh, ask their questions inside the chat. And on the screen, you can see our club's um, website address. So you can go there to learn more about our club and we leave our emails here. So if you have anything, like if you're watching from Facebook Live, you can email us for any questions afterwards, like if you have any. So uh, that's more or less about it for today. And I'll pass the time back to uh, the KLUSF secretary. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for uh, Ivan, Nita, and Chichen for this great sharing this uh, wonderful morning. Hope um, their sharing could really inspire more students okay, um, to have some new projects. So uh, for the participants, if you have any question, please uh, leave it at the chat box. Then we will um, ask the speaker to answer your queries. Okay. So while waiting for the question, um, we let's look, uh, look at the Facebook Live. So from the Facebook Live, um, there is no question yet, but just some uh, probably from uh, from your friends or some audience say hi to you. And uh, from Justin Leong, he say, wow, congratulations. And then from WK Call, say congrats to you. And then also uh, Leong Adrian said that we are so proud of you. Uh, okay, so let's look at the chat box in the Zoom here. From Ronnie, how long did you all took to complete the uh, helmet? Oh yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a, actually a really good question, you know. So um, yeah, I think it's half a year because, because actually this idea was conceived like in 2018, at the end of 2018. So like, at that time, the Taggate incident was happening and we got inspiration from there. So uh, we started uh, creating this project like we went through a lot of iterations and then we finally, I think we finished it around the May of next year or March of next year. Yeah. yeah. So like half a year Yeah. for the first prototype. So, so yeah, that's about how long it took. Thank you for asking. So if there are other questions, <laughs> feel free to ask. Oh, there's a question from Ronnie also. What is the overall cost of this uh, making of this? Oh yeah. Um oh yeah, <laughs> it's actually in our slide before, but because this is a rundown slide, uh because it's that's not our main point of the like presentation today. So uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, in our um the presentation, this was cut down a lot, and one of it was the project cost. I think around it's around like 50, 50 right? yeah 50 for the yeah. helmet and for the repeater it's around like 10 like that yeah but after mass production maybe the cost will be more or less yeah it's more affordable for many rescuers for the companies yeah yeah Thank you too, mm. Basti. <laughs> I found a few buffers. And there's a question from Facebook. Oh, uh, okay. No. What books on YouTube channel? You um, you guys can recommend. Oh. As, uh, some oh, of us in on coding, robotic, robotic. I think uh, that's a one YouTube channels. Uh, but I forgot the name. But it, it teach 
uh, Arduino programming for beginners. Uh, uh, I, but I really forgot the name, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you find it, see? Uh, well, I can find it. Yeah, but for me, I think like, um, for my recommendation, I think like for coding and robotics, uh, because I don't really touch robotics a lot. I just touch like coding. So I think like Fireship is a really great place to start. Fireship.io on YouTube. And then I really like his YouTube videos. So yeah, for coding part. What about you, Ivan? Sometimes I will use Khan Academy. They also teach a lot of programming inside. Yeah. And also have a lot of practice on it. So you can do more and learn more. And I, I, I just found it. It's called Paul Mac, uh, Mac Rotter. Yeah, we'll put it in the chat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Paul is uh, one of the recommendations. P-A-U-L. Oh, yeah, Paul, sorry. It's a typo. Yep. Yeah, so that's our recommendations for like uh, these subjects. Yeah, and the, the programming language we use for programming the microcontroller is the Arduino. Yeah. Yeah, type C. Yeah. C. C++, right. Yeah. It's Arduino C++. is yeah. the weird mesh, mesh, mesh of everything. So yeah, that's uh, for answering MK's question. And the next from one. the chat box, we can see that uh, Selena asked, what's the most difficult part that you face the most? Do you want to take this? <laughs> uh, what we face the most, I think is, maybe from the start is we are making the next mesh network that how we're going to set up, how it's going to connect to each other, how the ESP is going to make communication with each other. And I think that really took a long time in that to make like a development in it. And after that, the second most difficult part, I think is the smart glass that we also take a lot of time in it. And I think, yeah, the most two difficult thing is this, the smart glass and the mesh network, how we set up. Yeah. Yep. I also think like the idea generation part was a bit like, it was a bit hairy because we didn't know that if this idea was going to work or not. Yeah. Yeah. So those, yeah, that's why I think. <laughs> so thank you, Selena, for asking that wonderful question. Um, next, I think, yeah, student asked, how would your team would like to motivate other students to learn on programming? Mm -hmm. You want to take this, Ita? Because your hobby is programming. Okay. Uh, so um, for our club, uh, we actually did some activities on, we, we are teaching programming to some students out of our club, our members, and we, we, we do some uh, insta, in, in, uh, interesting project like uh, Kahoot hacking and <laughs> some um, um, the Discord bot. Yep. Yeah, so I, I, the activities Ita talked about was uh, because we have a weekly activity from 9 to 12 every Saturday. So like on that period of time, we teach them like programming and then we give them a program project. But most of the time it's just copy and pasting, but they actually learn a lot from copy and pasting. So yeah, they learn a lot uh, from our weekly activities. And if you, if you would like to see more of our projects, you can go to our Instagram page at cc underscore CRPHS, right? Yeah, yeah underscore. CC underscore CRPHS. We post uh, like projects over there. So if you'd like to check it out. Okay, so thank you student for asking that. It was a really interesting question. What radio? So um, MK asks, what radio do you use for your mesh network? Um, so for our mesh network, uh, we're not using any radio. Uh, we're using Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi that we all connected together and form a network that because it's a network and when you're looking like, but in a phone setting, Wi-Fi setting, you can see that the mesh network will show up in your setting. So maybe in that, we also plan to make like, maybe you can use the phone to make communication also when you didn't have any signal in the mountain or in the jungle or so, you can use that signal to maybe send message to maybe for like some emergency or some rescue. Yeah, so the answer was like, we use Wi-Fi, which is a high frequency radio, basically. So thank you for your question, MK. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's more, uh, more or less from the chat box. If there are other questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, you may drop your question here. So um, just would like to bring the message from Facebook Live. So Justin Leong say thank you to all of you. 
and then Adrian also say it's very interesting. Oh, thank you, thank, oh, you. thank you very much. Okay, so um, we're waiting for other questions. So I just like to uh, simplify one question when we receive from the registration. So from your experience coming out of, with a project ideas is time consuming and extremely hard. So uh, the person would like to ask how you guys come up with the executable and original ideas and then um, how you guys find ways to complete your project uh, if it's beyond your ability and also um, question about like how you balance your time like to, in your studies and to uh, finish your project. Um, so for this question, I pass it to Zhizhen. Oh, okay, sure. So like, um, coming from coming out with a project idea, like I think just coming out with a project idea was initially very hard. Like that was one of the biggest challenges just now, as uh, me and Ivan said. So like, um, we use scamper technique, and then um, that was one of the ways that we think of how to execute this idea. But like, um, for the original idea, like why, like which problem would you like to solve? I think that's um, more important because every project actually solves a problem. So whenever you find a problem that you like to solve, like that's it's more easier. So apart from that, uh, you can take like recent events that happen and think of how you can make a change to it. Such as at that, over at that time, we were thinking about like Thai cave incident because that was very like controversial and trending at that time. So like for now, maybe more of the, more of the projects that uh, we, if, we are, if you think of, think about uh, making a project, it's more like COVID nineteen and how to prevent it and the spread and its spread. So yeah, the idea, the answer is to get inspiration from your surroundings and what's happening right now, and to find ways that you can make a change to it. So um, I think you also asked about execution and how do we complete our project even if it's beyond our ability to do so on such a short notice. Um, I think. Yeah, because uh, on our team roles, uh, if you if you remember our team roles, right? Uh, oh, yeah, team roles, team roles. Um, one of the more um important parts is to split up your work into like e equivalent parts. So like um the more important the more harder parts you distribute it among, uh yourselves, and then, um, like the more important parts you can both uh you can all work on it. I remember like um when designing the smart uh the repeater, yeah, the repeater. Uh I was making it with Ivan because he was designing the inside of it. So like that was a, a bit hard, so I would work with him. But for other parts, we work individually and we report back. So we, like I think what I'm trying to say is discipline and like communications. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, working together will help complete your project faster and more efficiently. So yeah, thank you for whoever asked that question. If anyone still have any questions, you may uh, leave your question at the chat box here. Or maybe um maybe you, you guys can also share like your experience when you're participating in the international competitions. Like you, oh. Uh, any like, memorable things? Huh? <laughs> oh, um, actually, um, I remember the the international Hanoi competition. We actually went with Paulson, one of the presentation pre presenters yeah. last time on this webinar. So, like, um, he was a very his project was actually very good, but uh, Sally, I mean, not like Sally, but this his project actually is really good, and he also won the and a lot of other competitions like the MSC Africa. So, like. Um, learning about his project and learning about like uh, other people's projects was very fun. I remember like the Hong Kong team there did um, what's it called the AR for like dis disabled people. That's, yeah, yeah. So like they made a project for it's, it's like a game like basically so that you can control uh like control a game and then you can um it's like it makes the disabled get used with their wheelchairs you know. So like uh, it was a very interesting idea and very interesting project like to gamify the experience of learning how to use a wheelchair. So yeah, that was pretty interesting and fun. Yeah. 
So, um, Ivan, do you remember any other projects? Um, I remember that the one project is, uh, hmm? um, I think it's one is about the bones, uh, your back bones, oh, help, yeah, yeah. help your back bones, like, um, uh, straight, yeah, to, to let your backbone is more straight. Uh, won't, if you sit too long, then will uh, remind you to walk, uh, walk around, move around, yeah. and won't sit for too long. Yeah, I remember that too. Because like in this, like everyone has a computer and a uh, phone right now, right? So everyone slouches their back, like uh, have a bad posture. So our project was like to have a vest. I think it was a vest, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that they connect like flexible met uh, metals. So that when it flexes, the metal flexes, it releases current to tell the microcontroller that, oh, you should stand up, uh, sit up straight. So yeah, that was also an interesting project. Yeah. So uh, do you have any projects that, sir? Um, in my mind, the, uh, the two, the two you, you guys said is the, the, the one, the, uh, the two I, I'm most remember of. Yeah. Uh, the other, I, I, I don't very remember. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, but I think like it's a very eye-opening experience for us, yeah. you know, like seeing things from other people's perspectives. Okay. Okay, so um, there's no question from Facebook, so we let's see here if anyone. Just in case if I miss out your question, um, you may copy paste again your question here. Um, okay, so um, they have uh, the, the speakers, two of them have shared their email and then also the Instagram. Uh, just now, so if you have any uh, question you want to contact them, please feel free to contact them. Or we hope that maybe um, they can have more collaborations. Okay, so um, there's one comment from MK. Well done, Old Helmet team. And say hello to Selena and student of SMJ KC Sempali. Hello. Um, I so just thought of some questions. Uh, a lot of question. I would like to ask, like, how you guys handle stress, like if you want to give up. So I think most of the students will face this problem when they uh, keep thinking that, should I join a competition? Then, or halfway, they're thinking, want to give up. So do we have some words for them to encourage them? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, yeah, I just wanted to ask that question too, you know? I mean, like, say, talk about that. Because, uh, you know, as we are students, right? So yeah. uh, we, have, we have to study and then we have to like do our projects too. So like a lot of times our parents will be like, uh, you should put more attention on your studies. And so that, uh, the key part is balancing between uh, studying and your projects. So I think that's where a lot of stress comes from, right? Yep. Uh, so like, how do you balance them and manage your stress? If, uh, so for me, uh, uh, when the exam is around the corner, um, I will stop doing, doing my project and work hard on my studies. Like like two weeks of uh two weeks before the exam, and I will stop working on my project. And after the exam, I will start continue to to make my project. What about you, Ivan? Mm, yeah, it's so same. Oh. Because we really need to study for exam. Yeah, yeah. Studying is like your main thing to do. Like, the projects are on the side. Yeah. Yeah, but learning is always on top. So like um for me personally, I think like if. If I have a very important project, but the exam is due next week, I'll put the project on the side completely and then like extend any deadlines I have if I can. And then after the exam, I'll switch back into project mode. So like it's either 100% studies or 100% projects. 
it, like if you walk the middle line, it will be very hard for you. So that's one of the uh, yeah, ways to manage your time and your stress and balance between the both. So <laughs> that's about it from us, right? Yep. So um, maybe in future, in case of all the, um, any participants, you want to ask the speaker any question, you also may drop your question at the Facebook live video. So do you still, um, is the, uh, all the participants, do you still have any questions? Okay, so um, before, um, before we take the group photo and end the session, I uh, would just like to inform that we have posted the sign in, sign out form link and also the feedback form link at the chat box. So please help us to fill out the feedback form after the webinar. Um, we need your response um, to help us to improve. Okay, so I think um, there's no other questions. So um, let's uh, take the, the screenshot of the group photo first. Okay, so I would like to uh, request that um, the participants, um, please turn on your camera. camera. We will take a few screenshots. Okay, ready everyone? Ready everyone? One, two, three. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you everyone. So um, for uh, our speakers, um, thank you, Ivan, uh, Zita, and Zicheng for this uh, sharing. We really hope that um, you all will have a bright future. Uh, thank really you for having us, Allah. I mean, like this is our first time I'm having given a presentation. So yeah, thank you for attending and thank you for having us, uh, KRSF community. We hope that um, in future, maybe you have some new new project, you can also join us. Of course, of course. Thank you. Then um, maybe after the webinar, you can have a look for other comments at the Facebook Live there. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. So there's no other question. So uh, we will end the webinar soon. I would just like to promote that if you'd like to know more about KLSF virtual event, Please like mm -hmm. our KLSF Facebook page. KLSF is Kuala Lumpur Engineering Science Fair. So we will update our more coming events at our page. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you everyone. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.